Hey guys and welcome back. Um, in most cases, civil structures are placed on the ground. You go outside, you see houses, and then underneath the house you have a foundation, right? That segment of the structure which interfaces with the ground, again, is called a foundation. Um, in this video, we're going to focus on a particular type of foundation called the shallow foundation. Um, shallow foundations are composed of footings which are plate type elements placed on the ground and the whole point the whole point of footings is to transmit the loads in the columns and walls to the ground in a safe manner and again for this video we're going to describe the various types of shallow footings and identify the conditions under which type is deployed so again we here we here we have our shallow foundation and here we have our deep foundation Okay, so just keep that in mind, and I, I, I did a 3D model here, so it looks pretty cool, I guess, and kind of see what's going on here. Um, civil structure are viewed as, as having two parts, and we're very focused on designing the superstructure, but we also have to pay a lot, of a lot of mind and a lot of attention to the substructure, the foundation, because if the foundation is weak, if the foundation fails, if there's sediment in the foundation, some sort, um, it's going to impact the superstructure. It's going to impact the building itself. So a weak foundation is going to bring ha havoc to the superstructure. So always, always when designing from the foundation, please take time to design it correctly. Okay. All right. So let's continue. So our first footing here is just a plain spread footing. Uh, a spread footing is a reinforced concrete plate type structure component that rests directly on the ground and supports one or more columns or walls. And I'm, I'm going to use an analogy. Uh, think about a sword. And let's say you have a sword and you're going to thrust something. Okay. The force that you're using, that you're thrusting, let's say is a uh, 100 pound force. Okay. Now the area the, of the point of the sword is very small, so the so it's going to penetrate the sword is going to penetrate whatever you're impacting, due to the fact that the area is small. Now what happens is if you increase the area, okay, if you increase the area of that point, then it's it's it, that sword let's say will be dull and it won't penetrate as well as if it was sharp. So if you increase the area, I mean, let's say you make it much greater or you break the sword or something, uh, you, if you increase the area, then you're decreasing the stress. And if you decrease the stress, then uh, it won't, um, let's say, uh, if you decrease the stress of a sword, it's not going to penetrate, it won't kill a person, let's say. All right. So it's the same thing when it comes to footings. We have a column here. It's imagine it as a sword. It's penetrating the ground if there is no footing. Now what the footing is doing is spreading that load out so there's enough area to decrease the stress that it sees. Very basic, very simple. Hopefully that was somewhat intuitive and understandable. All right, so that's a spread footing. Now what happens when you have two columns that are very close to each other? You're going to have a combined footing. So you have a column, column, and then the footing itself the footings are uh, combined they're very close to each other so you just combine them you might as well combine the footings together so we're gonna have here a combined footing and I mean I could read this here I mean but you guys could do it so you could pause it and read it um, I don't want to read it so there you go a combined footing uh, next what we have is strapped footing so let's say you have a column here and it has a, uh, some load and there's like a property property line All right let's say you have somebody that lives over here on this side okay now you need a specific you need some type of area you need some type of dimension for the footing but you can't get it because you have a property line alright so this guy needs help this this footing says hey hey guy hey neighbor I need help I need your help. I need you to help me out. So in order to help this guy out, in order, in order to help this footing, what you could do is you could strap. Huh, that's where they come. They came up with the word. You could strap this footing with another footing with this beam over here. 
which is called a strap beam. So you know what's going to happen is that there's going to be a transfer of loads. This guy wants to go down and is transferring some load. And then this, this neighboring footing is picking up the slack. This neighboring footing is helping this footing over here. So this is a strap footing. So again, when adjacent columns are located too far to each other and or other column is located too close to our property line, and then the set of geometry of the footing can't be done, then we can transfer some of the loading to a neighboring footing by means of a strap beam. So there you go. Pretty cool. Now, here we have our shallow foundation is just a spread footing, very, uh, very simple. And we have a concentrated load, an axial load going down. Now, what we have here is a distribution, a soil pressure distribution, and it depends on what type of materials is under the footing. So over here, we have sandy soil. So if, you have, if there is sandy soil below the footing, then it's going to give you some type of distribution, some uh, like a par uh, parabola type of uh, distribution. Now, if you have a clay soil, you're going to have this type of a soil distribution which is opposite of the sandy soil uh, clay soil it's more like, like a concave type of like, like a like a lens type of shape here Th that's the di distribution you're gonna get for a clay soil and then if you combine this tool let's say um, you get an average soil pressure you're gonna get a uniform load which is something desirable it's something that uh, structure engineers and geotechs this is what we want because this is what we want because this is what we could control. And it's also easier when um, calculating for bending stress, shear stress on the footing itself if we have an average soil pressure. Now, we want the load to go towards the center of gravity of the footing itself. All right, and then that's going to give us a uniform uh, distribution. However, that's not the case sometimes. Sometimes we have a load and there is some kind of moment. So what's going to happen? The soil has to compensate. The soil has to uh, provide a little bit more uh, force on one side compared to the other. So over here you have an actual load and it's, there's a moment going um, counterclockwise. So that means that this guy has to provide some extra loading over here on the left side of that footing so we get this trapezoidal uh, di soil distribution. Same thing if there was a, a axial load and there's some, some type of eccentricity. Usually we don't want to have some eccentricity but sometimes we can't help it. So again we're going to have this type of trapezoidal uh, soil distribution. Now as we increase the axial load and we increase the moment or the same thing if we increase the eccentricity or the axial load, it's going to the the trapezoidal distribution soil distribution is going to change into a triangular uh, distribution. That's because soil cannot take tension. All right, you have let's say you go to the beach, you could compress sand together, you could compress it, but when you uh, apply some tension to the sand. It just is not, there's no strength there. So this is what's happening. You're gonna get a triangular soil distribution due to that. Due to that fact that soil itself has no strength and tension. Zero. We assume it's zero. And uh I think that's it. I think uh this is pretty much it for this shallow foundation. Is again you have a segment or a footing that is transferring load from a column to the ground and what the footing is doing is spreading is increasing the area to is increasing the area so that the force could be spread out and is not and then the soil will not fail and and the column itself is not penetrating through the soil so that's that's pretty much it when it comes to shallow foundation and uh, again, here are, are the distribution, soil distribution, depending on what type of soil we have underneath the footing, and the also um, if there is any kind of eccentricity or moment, that's also going to affect the soil uh, 
distribution under the footing. Um, hope, I hope you guys learned something. Uh, in, an, in the next video, what I'll do is uh, it's going to be more of an analysis uh, and theory. So that's going to be the part two for the Shallow, shallow Foundation. So again, I hope you guys enjoy the video. hope you guys learned. Um, have a great day and I'll see you guys later.